Hello, I'm Steve Parsons. This is my art project, Beautiful Struggle. Thank you for showing some interest in it and sharing some of your time with me today. Beautiful Struggle is a mixed project that takes the genre of fine art landscape and mixes it with environmental portraiture. What I do is I take pictures of these plants that are growing in these hostile or difficult environments and they're not just surviving, they're actually thriving as you can see in this image here. And I photograph them in such a way to kind of highlight the beauty of the moment. And that becomes kind of a metaphor for, for life and the human condition of struggle. And you, you'll see later on in Project for Us, I then pair up these strugglers, as I affectionately call them, with some human strugglers. So I come across people in life that are struggling with whatever their burdens may be. And I ask them to pick a picture from my library uh, that they identify with, something that speaks to them personally and, and represents maybe part of their story or part of their life. And then I take an environmental photograph of the human struggler holding our plant struggler. I pair those together for this project. Here's an example uh, with Ashley and her boyfriend that were homeless on the streets of Salt Lake City. Um, and so after I've created this portrait, then I share part of their story, uh, keeping their last names confidential and you know details that they may not want shared. And I present this in a book format. It's a, hand, a beautiful hand-built book uh, that uh, I can show you at the end of the presentation. Uh, so for example, the, the captions are really pretty simple. It just reads, Meet Ashley. She's a homeless Navy veteran. She had all her belongings stolen. She's living on the street because the shelter isn't safe to be in. And Ashley just wants to finish her last year of nursing school so that she can help others. I'll let that sink in for a minute. Here's Here's a girl that's lost everything, and, and it was taken from her by other people, and she still just wants to serve these other people. So let's look at the history of photography specifically for a minute. Historically, the science of photography was all about depiction. If we go to the earliest history of photography, we go back to the camera obscura, which was a device painters used to help them create their paintings. It, think of an overhead transparency that was a projection and then they could try and, try and trace some lines and, and speed up some of their painting process. And that camera obscura actually became the mechanism for recording this light later on. Instead of having the painter trace the lines, we were using light sensitive media to capture those lines and, and forms. So this here obviously is the first known photograph that was taken. Uh, known as the view from the window at Lake Gera. Uh This photograph is uh, Boulevard du Timbre in Paris. It was made in 1838 by Louis Daguerre. He's the predecessor, he's the inventor of the daguerreotype, which was uh, arguably the first process that was developed, but the second one to come to market, so he doesn't get credited with inventing photography, but rather inventing the daguerreotype. And this particular photo is known as the first photo containing a human being. You can see a man uh, down at the lamppost in the bottom left corner. And this is the first photograph that contains a human being, not quite a portrait. Again, uh, Daguerre was portraying the street, this boulevard, and the man just happened to be there. The rest of the people, as they were coming and going, have blurred out because of the long exposure of this technique. This particular image... Uh, about a year after the daguerre, daguerreotype of the boulevard, this was the first human portrait uh, by Robert Cornelius. And so now we've seen depiction is moving from just can we capture light to we're capturing light deliberately to we're capturing light of specific subject matter. Anna Atkins, uh, some presume she was the first woman to create a photograph, whether or not that's true. Uh, but she did publish the first book that had photo illustrations in. She used the cyanotype process, and she created these photographs herself. She was a botanist, but again, we were using photography to depict something. She wanted to explain what the particular plants were and illustrate them in her book. So again, we've had this depictive medium uh, recording things, ma making a record of things. Early landscapes, uh, Timothy O'Sullivan is one of my favorite artists. Uh, many people know his work from during the Civil War, working with Matthew Brady and, and others, and some very famous photographs he made. He was also commissioned 
uh, to explore the West and make a record of it, bring it back uh, to Congress. And this is one of his images of Canyon de Chez in Arizona. It's a sacred tribal land now. Very, very beautiful place. Uh, but many people argue that Timothy O'Sullivan was the first person to introduce art into a photograph to where he, he was no longer just depicting things, but rather he was creating images that, that moved people. So we're starting to move from just depiction of the land to a landscape. So in Beautiful Struggle, like we discussed earlier, I pair an original landscape image of the struggler plants. I pair it with a struggler person and then I make an environmental portrait. Uh, and all of these things, these little breadcrumbs along the trail to this person and their story, they fill in some of the gaps that maybe the text does not, some of the context. And as Minor White always describes to people, every photograph is really a self-portrait. If, if you look at it, the fingerprints of the artist are clear through it, and, and my work is no different. When you look at the project as a whole, when you look at all the different projects I do, there's lots of little breadcrumbs into to my life and clues that give a really accurate self-portrait of my own life. Um, we're we're going to talk a little bit about symbolism. Uh, symbolism began, I think, from, from the earliest storytelling. And when we used to tell stories in caves with paintings on the walls, uh, we were still using symbolism. This is a set of uh, pictographs that I photographed down in Zions Canyon. And different people are depicted differently in the early cave paintings. Certain headdresses denote certain ranks in a tribe, uh, certain genders. So th they have symbols to represent things because they weren't painting in a photorealistic way. So we've really had symbolism long before photography came around. But photography wasn't adopting symbolism in its infancy uh, like the painters were. But it does come to symbolism later in its evolution. Beautiful Struggle is a project that really relies heavily on symbolism, uh, especially with the environmental portraiture aspect of it. Um, the symbolism movement uh, began in the late 19th century by French poeta poets, and uh, it graduated through all of the arts, but it, it was really based on this premise that art should be more about feelings and emotions and more about and, and less about realism and depiction. Uh, so this is one of the better known symbolism paintings of the era. This is The Beguiling of Merlin by Edward Byrne Jones. And in this painting, we have his uh, alleged, uh, obviously this comes from Arthur Legend, but uh, we have his alleged mistress, Nimue, who has him trapped in a hawthorn bush while she's reading his book of spells. And so we start to see some of the symbolism uh, of the moment. It, it's not just depiction of a portrait of Merlin and his mistress. There's a story here and a narrative, and, and the more we learn about it, the more we understand the moment, and we can continue to pick things out from, from lines and colors, and, and there's all kinds of symbolism that ultimately has meaning to the story. So in my own project, for example, uh, let's take this image of Christy. Uh, she chose uh, this image of some rabbit brush, gr rabbit brush growing out of the sand dune. And there's a lot of symbolism in, the, in this image itself for me. There's this dark stormy sky. Uh, we see the sand and sand dunes and everything that they represent. They're so temporary. They're moving. They're changing. And we have these lines radiating through the sand dunes that ultimately all point at this rabbit brush that's several years old, and even though sand is constantly shifting, it's managed to, to stake a claim to a piece of ground, gather enough moisture and nutrients from the shifting sand to, to start growing, and in the fall, these blossom a beautiful yellow. And so right now we're seeing this plant in the infancy of its struggle and, and knowing what's coming, despite the storm, despite the wind that's displacing the sand even at this very moment. So Christy identified with this particular image. And let me tell you a little bit about this beautiful young lady. Uh, at the time I met Christy, she was uh, 18 years old, and she was diagnosed at age 15 with cirrhosis of the liver. She had an autoimmune disorder that was attacking her liver and killing her body. Um, and basically she was dying. And, and she told me that before she died, she wanted to be a model. And I was so touched by it, and by her, she's such a lovely, beautiful person inside and out. 
And so I told her I'd help her build a portfolio and and we started down that road and, and actually launched her career. She's had several paid gigs now, and she's doing very well health-wise. Uh, she's having a good spell right now where her body's doing the best it's done in a long time. And so for her environmental portrait, we took a picture of her in the studio with studio lighting uh, in a wardrobe that she was wearing for a shoot. So again, we can look at all the symbolism of the plant she chose the symbolism of where I chose to photograph her and, and the way. One thing you'll notice about my photographs is the level of the camera lens in relation to my subject always tells you something about how I feel about the subject. And you can see from this particular photograph, I'm slightly lower than Christy, and I'm looking up to her. And, and that's not just a physical thing in the photograph. That's absolutely a symbolic thing of how I feel about Christy and how valiant she is in her own struggle and her own life. So all my images are very, very symbol rich and again, tie back in and relate to things in my own life. So in conclusion, Beautiful Struggle is this project uh, of landscape mixed with environmental portraiture, mixed with symbolism and, and all this beauty. And we, we take all these layers and we wrap them up together as one and that's really another metaphor for life, isn't it? Because all of these things, once the more we study things, the more we find out how connected they are and how connected we are to each other and to the land itself and ultimately to these little strugglers. Uh, and the goal of this whole project is not only to share the triumph of these people that I admire and, and, and that I'm personally inspired by, but the idea of the project is to get people to reflect inwardly on them their own struggles. When we're going through our struggle, often that's all we can see is the darkness and the pain. But somebody from the outside looking in might be inspired or motivated by how we're dealing with our own struggles. We might be somebody else's motivation. We might be their beautiful struggler. And then I want people to make the leap after that to, okay, this is how it relates to me. And you know, these people in these photographs, they don't look that different than you and I, and they're struggling with some really big things maybe I should be a little more tolerant and patient with people around me. Maybe I should recognize that they do have a struggle and their struggle is beautiful to me. So thank you for your time. And if you have any more questions, now's a good time to ask them.